I ended up committing to Temple and I committed to Coach Collins, who is currently at Georgia Tech right now. And when I committed to him, um, maybe I want to say a couple months later, he ended up taking a job at Georgia Tech. And that made everything a little bit more difficult because I was already becoming a mid-year guy, you know, um, leaving the score I was at. And recruiting was coming to an end for guys in my, in my class. Re recruiting was coming up, but I was already uh, committed for so long. So I had decommitted. And when I decommitted, you know, I thought going into that situation, I had a great year, had great film. But again, what hurt me was the grades, not being academically eligible. So that put me in a stump. And, you know, colleges were still coming in slow. They were trying to figure out ways to get me eligible. And then Manny Diaz, who is at Miami right now, he ends up coming in, taking in a job on National Signing Day. I decided to sign with him. You know, he told me a lot of good things. And then a week later, he ended up leaving and going back to Miami. So by that time, I was already at Temple. I was a mid-year enrollee. The day I flew in was the day he took the job at Miami. So at that time, it, I was already here. I had to make the most of it. And then they ended up getting Rod Carey, who came from NIU. And, you know, the, his, the, the rest kind of goes from there. And, you know, he's, he's a great coach. You know, he reminds me a lot of Coach Loft and then Coach, coach Karate. He's just old school coaching. You know, they just want to play football. Um, and you know, they're not about the flash, not about none of that stuff. They they just want to, it's everything's a road trip, it's a business trip. You go in, you win, and you come out. Um, and you know, he our, you know, and that's one thing I feel like Coach 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 Care, I mean, Coach Karate and Coach Law for Pyramid was, you know, it, it's about just getting, you know, going there and, and making the business trip and coming back and, and being with your peoples. Dante, your, your process was frustrating. Um, you, you saw a bunch of your buddies um getting offers you knew you were good at as uh just as good as them or if not better um I know you had some moments of um you were down you, you were pretty frustrated um it all worked out and you got a and you're at a great place now um but you know take us through some of those moments of you know uh, of being down and what you're telling yourself and and kind of how you got through that So uh, towards like the end of my junior year, I saw a lot of guys uh, like where I'm from and um, guys that I, guys that I knew that were getting like offer after offer. After offer. And uh, that time, you know, I was staying patient. You know, my dad was telling me to stay humble. And you were telling me to be patient in time to tell me stuff like that. And oh, uh, I think during I want to say like during camp season when I was going to camp and I was still like you know I was dominating at camps like that and still wasn't coming along. Long, I went to my room one day. And I was just I just thought to myself like sat in the room for like two hours. Thought to myself like. I don't think this is for me anymore. And uh, I went to my mom, told her, you know, because I was scared of my dad and all what he would say. And um, we had to talk about it. She, she, she ended up telling him regardless. Uh, and then uh, he was just, he just sat me down and told me, like, he, he didn't talk to me. He kind of, like, yelled at me. But uh, he was just like, we put much, too much time to this for you to just quit. Um, this, this, is just, this is your path. Like, you, you either quit or you keep going. So I decided to keep going. Um, Mary Matt came along. Um, I don't know if Loff knew they recruited me. This is kind of one out of the blue type of thing. I had a great co conversation with Curran one day, first time meeting the guy. I think a week later he offered me. So that was just a great just experience right there. You know, I got home, celebrated with my family, celebrated with Loff over the phone the day after that. Um, then a um, few of the schools came along, CCSU, Sacred Heart. And then uh, it was a bit of a it was a bit of a tricky situation after I, uh, after I verbally committed because a lot of other schools started coming in. And me and Loft, my dad had a lot of conversations about um, moving forward in the progress, in the process. Um, Rhode Island came along, made it trying to stick it away from me. Take a heart came along, made it stick it away from me coming to school. So, but I just stuck with my gut. Um, Coach Curran, Coach Robat over at Merrimack, great guys. Check them only every day. That's what I love. It's family vibe. They, and that's why I chose Merrimack. Um. Thanks for that, man. I know, I know that was, it's always, I try to get guys to, t like, it's always a process, no matter if you're, you're going to Temple, you're going to Ole Miss, you're going to Merrimack, you're going to Trinity, you're going to, you know, wherever, like, it's always a process and it's always hard. Um, and I think guys sometimes enter the process, like it's really uh, glamorous. And I don't think it's glamorous at all. I think it's hard. And and you guys know you want what's best. You know, you, you're trying to make a good decision. You know, you're trying to rely on good advice, but it's a lot of stuff. And in the world we live in right now. Yeah. If I could add on to that, like, um, 
it's all fun and games and all cool and all like when you post it at the time, but when it comes down to make a decision, like this there's, there's always gonna be like like forks in the road there, like, oh, you need you need this SAT score to get there. Like, oh, you didn't tell me that before when you offered me, like stuff like that, like the money situation. So just never think never think like an offer is just like, oh yeah, I can go there if I want. You still gotta you still gotta be hundred percent in the classroom, hundred percent on the field, hundred percent as a person. As a person, they didn't actually become a school. How's he as a person? How's he in the school? He, he don't, they don't care about the athletics coming first. And that was something that I had to I had to fix my act going in my senior year. I feel like I did that for the most part. I could do a little bit better, but that's that was that was a big goal for me going in my senior year. To to top on that too, um, like John, like Coach Law said, is you know same thing with me seeing my peers get all these offers and knowing that I was was better than them. You know, one thing that I always look back is all that stars like. Dudes having this star, that star, five star, whatever the case may be, none of that matters, man. Um, you know, coming from a situation, coming from TP, you know, I, I was able to. I'm, I'm starting over a lot of guys who are five stars at, at different programs, and I had a pretty good season compared to all those guys. So, you know, no matter you know your athletic ability compared to other people, if you, you just continue to work and grind, grind, you know, yeah. look at guys like Chiz. Like Chiz is one of the hardest workers that I think. You know, I think TP has ever had. You know, that guy came in and, and never complained and and put his head down and worked and you know and and look where he's at like this man's shredded dude's like you know he's gonna go out there he's gonna work he's gonna play but you, you know you want to look at guys like that who who will never give up they won't listen to what you got to say about them they're just going to continue to be dogs so you know forget all that my friend got this offer that i'm better just work and, and things will come yeah that's that's great advice and again like chizu Manakwe is a kid that we had played with ray he was he was a tailback and ray was a quarterback and this is down to Towson University now, and um, you know he's he, he's he's shredded. I mean, it, when I see him, I look. It's like looking in the mirror, right? <laughs> um, we talked a lot about this season. We talked a lot about redefining success. Dante was a big part of that. Um, I saw a lot of growth, um, maturity-wise, in, in D this season. Um, one of the moments that. Uh, kind of defined our season this year, Ray, was is, is we went up to a fire pit um, that Mr. Frost was able to build uh, the previous year, and we all went up there, and as we were walking up, <laughs> Mrs. De La Sorte uh, made us uh, a little uh, s'mores packets, which were awesome, And but as we're walking up there uh, in the dark with, like, four flashlights, and uh, nobody had their cell phone because I took their phones, um, and we kind of got into some stuff, and uh, and uh, we, we, we just kind of, you know, we had some s'mores and enjoyed each other's company. But I was asking some guys some questions. And, um, and again, like, that's a moment that stands out to me uh, that brought our team together um, as guys kind of putting themselves out there. Um, and, and Dante knows, the, you know, the moment when he kind of put himself out there. Finally, uh, I've been begging him to do that and kind of made himself vulnerable to his teammates. And then from then on, like, we didn't win every game, but – uh, we were in every game, and uh, you know it was it was a fun it was a fun team to coach. Um, but you know, uh, one of the moments Ray that uh, I remember is is your chapel talk, talking about your family and your dad, and um, you've had a tough road, man, um, and and you're at a great place right now, and sky's the limit for you. But if you could just talk about maybe some of your obstacles and and your path and and like how you got through it and and and, and all that. Yeah, um, I mean, you know, uh, you know, my situation is I came from foster care. Um, that's where I spent most of my childhood growing up. I was bounced from house to house, um, you know, um, and and it was a difficult road because I I felt like no one really wanted me. You know, um, you know, going from house to house, being with different families. I ended up living with my teachers for about two three years, and and um, you know, being in a situation where you know I always felt like somebody was giving up on me or someone only loved me for my athletic ability. You know, I would always have fights with my, my father because he would only text me for this football, this, if that, for a reason. It was never about checking up on me, you know, how I'm doing. Um, you know, I always felt that I always have put other people's needs before me. And, I mean, still to this day, I do that. But, you know, I'm working on trying to put myself first and, and realizing that stuff that I need to do to make me a better person, you know, as, as a person and as a player. And, um, you know, I, I never gave up. You know, I, I and you know, you're gonna ask Coach Loff and Crowdy was as many times we had arguments. I always try to see the bigger picture. Was it? You know, I know my my athletic ability, and I know I can get to that next level if I just put my head down and and work through it. And you know, sometimes 
I, I, I did have to do some, some stuff that I should never done. Um, you know, I burned some bridges with relationships, with people, but I just realized that, you know, eventually, you know, um, this is the path that I have to take. And talking about travel talk, um, you know, it, it was pretty difficult because I didn't want to, I, you know, I, I wasn't a guy who always told my story to people. You know, I was a guy who was always to myself. When, when things got hard, I shut down. And one thing I would tell a lot of people is you got to talk your issues out. You know, it don't got to be with, you don't got to be with a coach. You don't got to be with your best friend, you know, just be anyone that you trust. And, you know, the best thing is to never bottle everything up to always at least get it out and, and or yell it out or whatever the case may be. But that's one thing that hurt me was just keeping everything mm-hmm. out and, 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 not, and not being able to talk to no one about it. Uh, but one thing I would say is something that happened in the past of being in foster care, uh, being incarcerated, my mother being incarcerated. I think that's made me who I am today. Um, you know, I, I had to, I had to learn how to, I had to grow up as a man at an early age you know, I've seen my mom get beat. I've seen a lot of things that a young man shouldn't have saw, but you know that that's what made me who I am today. Of being able to take care of other people, to, be able to learn how to to be a man and, and do the things that no one would expect me to ever do. Um, and, and I think that's what also prepared me to just not give up, to have that work ethic of, of never giving up and, and do whatever I do to achieve what I want to do. Dante, talk about. Uh... There's a few questions I want to get to. So, uh, but Dante, I want to I want you to talk about uh, your influences in your life. Um, obviously, your parents are are, are your backbone, I, I think, and uh, just 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 good people um, that want what's best for you. And um, but talk about talk about your influences in your life. I feel I was my father, my mother, um, my little brother. Uh, my dad's been always one to push me, no matter what. My mom, she's been also she's been one to push me, but also been like my safe haven. If I need someone to talk to, which she's always there. Um, I build I build a lot of coaching staff, coaching staff. Um, Coach Webbs, uh, Coach Karate. He, when he yelled at me a few times, uh, that I, I put I pushed me harder to go. And then even this year, having Coach Richards as um as my teacher, that just just showed me like like. He's he, he's he's willing to help me out no matter what. It was in class. I was struggling a few times. Sat down, kept it real. Me talked to me. He wasn't babying me. None of that. So that just showed me that people were here and care about me. Especially you. At first, I thought you were just um there, uh, just nagging, picking on me stuff like that. But I just know that it was tough love. And you want you knew I had, I could reach, I could reach limits that I didn't know were capable for me. And um, I feel like I'm still reaching, but I'm gonna get there pretty soon. I appreciate that, um, and I know those guys do. Um, Ray and I had a few squabbles. <laughs> More like almost every day. Every day, every day, yeah, maybe every day. That was exhausting, uh, but totally worth it. Um, and I'm proud of you guys. Um, let me get um, a couple guys. Uh, one guy just said, you know, how does the uh, private school education? Uh, did you have to make any adjustments? You guys talked about this a little bit earlier. Um, were there any adjustments going from, you know, a smaller school to a bigger environment? Uh, for, you got it. I got, I got, um, for me, yeah. Uh, one, one of the things, that, which is funny, is uh, I didn't know you could just leave to go to the bathroom in college. I, I was such <laughs> raising my hand and asking. Um, <laughs> I'm asking Weber and Coach Richards and Coach Lofty in the bathroom when I didn't want to answer a question. So now I'm in college, I can just leave whenever I want. Um, but no, I mean, definitely being in a bigger classroom was, you know, it was a little difficult at first for me just because I wasn't able to have that one-on-one attention that, I, you know, I got the luxury of having that TP. Um, and then also being in college, like, you know, every, everything's on your own. Um, you got to be able to email that teacher. You got to be able to turn this assignment. You got to be able to look on the portal. You know, everything is, you know, no, nothing's going to be the teacher. Like, oh, yeah, let's meet here. Let's meet there. Let's meet and close. Like, no, um, I'd be able to, uh, to, to, to do stuff on your own. And you remember when you got to get stuff turned in, you know, raise your hands and, and, and try to ask many questions in the classroom because teachers are on the hop. You know, teachers have to teach other classes when periods end. You won't have that one-on-one time. So it's probably one of the biggest adjustments that I had to make was, to, to do what I need to do uh, quicker and faster. Um, I feel like me and me and Ray have like different us uh, environments. Uh, I, I chose a smaller school just based on my uh, my learning skills. So I chose so my class is probably biggest is probably about like thirty. Um, if you get them a lecture base, so lecture base is like is really different compared to TP. TP is kind of like very like interactive and like um, 
what's the word? And like opinion based, like somewhat. So a lot of classes you gotta learn how to take notes, like sit there for an hour and fifteen minutes and just listen. Like don't raise ask no questions. Just listen. Biggest thing Ray said, yeah, like I said before, just just knowing when to just kick in, but oh, I, I gotta I gotta do this, I gotta email her. Like he's going out there and goes, like, you gotta step out of your comfort zone a lot in college. I've only been there for a month and I had to step out and cover comfort zone a few times. So that's just the biggest thing. Ray, somebody asked, um, just like with your your grades, I know your SATs um, had to come up. That was that was what was holding up all the recruiting was the SAT score. Um, but um, <laughs> how did you get to Temple? Like, what was the path you were you know you, you took? Um, you know, so I, I was I was I had to take a post grad year. Um, you know, originally I was going to do a post grad year at TP. Things had changed, and I'm doing a post grad year at Blair Academy and kind of uh, stuff end up picking up from there. I mean, I think the biggest thing that I did when I was there was just, you know, get into the to SAT and ACT prep and, and really get going with that. Um, you know, unfortunately, again, my scores kind of came in super late during the super, during the recruiting process. Um, I ended up doing pretty well on my ACT, and I got 29. Um, so, you know, but, I, I mean, I did have to take the, the, the version of the, the – the, the postgrad year, and I was told to a lot of guys, like, I, I loved it. You know, I think it's a really good thing for a lot of guys to do to prepare them um, for that next step of going to college. And, and I think a lot of people need to go in um, a little bit more simple-minded um, rather than clueless. And, you know, I, that, that was the path I took. And, you know, I would have loved to, to uh, do my fifth year at TP, try to win another bowl game. Um, but things, things went a different way. But, yeah, it was, it was pretty good. I got to go to Blair, and I got to be with uh, – another TP alumni, Team Crocker. Um, it, was, it was pretty nice. Um, any uh, words? Uh, we're, we're kind of right at it right now, but um, maybe I'll, I'll go Dante first and then Ray maybe as the eldest statesman. Um, but any, um, like if you were talking to a young Dante Williams um, who was like 140 pounds uh, when he got here or something like that. Um, I was I I was 155. Oh, uh, okay. Um, <laughs> but when you're talking to him, like right now, like what would what would be some stuff that you would say? Uh, you guys gave a lot of great uh, advice um, this this whole hour, but Dante, what would something that you would say to have you know just kind of harp on? I would probably tell myself to keep keep my head up, keep pushing. Um, I also wanted to get into. Uh, I didn't get into it, but I wanted to get. Tell myself to get into a lot of uh, school school based activities. Uh, I missed out on a play opportunity, but I would tell myself to do that. Um, that's pretty much it. I feel like I was in the community a lot. Uh, my best friends were were the faculty kids, so not that much. Keep your head up and keep pushing. Yeah, you started scratching it a little bit though. You started doing making those the 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 movies, uh, the scary movies with uh, Marquise and other. <laughs> Uh, a little bit, a little bit. I wish I, I wish I'm being a in a play, but yeah, I, yeah. We 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 talked about that a bunch of times, yeah. but uh, yeah. but you 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 scratch the surface a little. A little bit. bit, a little bit. Yeah, I made a few films. Ray, what about you? Like, uh, you again? Like in the time I've known you, man, you've grown up so much uh, as a person, uh, maturity wise, the whole deal. Um, so <laughs> imagine you're me. And I'm talking to you as a sophomore. And what would you say to yourself? Uh, first thing I would say was I should have got that doctor's note probably, probably a little earlier. Uh, Coach Karate and Webb and no one could have got on my butt about the facial hair. I would have got the doctor's note a lot earlier. Um, you know, but but um, you know, I think one thing, like I said earlier, is I would have I, I wish I could tell myself to buy in. You know, I, I think I would have had a, a better TP experience if I bought in and. And 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 just you know roll with the punches and do do what I have to do, not to always try to be defiant, always trying to beat the system, or or always trying to take the, the easier way out. You know, I wish I was able to have the good experience a lot of guys did, with buying in and, and just enjoying every every moment at TP. Um, you know, I wish that I actually I, I would I would say that I would I would never change all our arguments because I think it made me realize how much you cared. Um, you know, I think a lot of, a lot of other coaches back then would have completely gave up on me, you know, said, forget this kid. But the fact that you kept coming back and you kept trying and, and, and you wouldn't give up and same thing with all the other three coaches is, is one thing uh, that I was grateful for. 
Um, the biggest thing I would just tell myself is to buy in, you know, athletically, I could definitely academically buy in because, you know, I, I think a lot of people had this, this uh, perception of me of being defiant and, and Ray trying to take an easy way out and Ray trying to do this and all oh, right here. Um, now I just really wish that I, I, I was able to um, have a, a smooth sailing and, and, uh, and definitely shout out to Webbs. He got me through chemistry. Uh, I'll be honest. I don't think I would have passed chemistry without Webb. Even the days that he taught me, uh, you know, that's between me and him. But um, yeah, Webbs is uh, good for that. You know, he's yeah. helpful. But hey, man, one of the uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna let uh, some of the other coaches maybe chime in. So if they want to speak, but uh, one of the things is both. I'm, um, you know, we we are thankful that you are here. We're grateful that you and and your families are are, are well. Um, you know, we had a lot of great moments, uh, Dante, this season, um, you know, but Ray, like one of the highlights of the whole year was like, you texted me, Hey, good luck against Taft. And then like three hours later, you're on campus. And, uh, that was unbelievable. And then you calling, uh, and saying, Hey, can I talk to the team coach? Um, you know, I think it was, I think it was the Salisbury week, uh, but coach, can I, you just put me in front of the team? I just want to talk to him, man. It was like, uh, you talk about the f definition of succeeding and, and definition of success. And again, like when guys care that much to get back and uh, they just want to help, um, you know, that, that makes my whole uh, experience. That's why you do it. Um, but uh, I'm proud of you guys. We're all proud of you guys. Uh, obviously we're going to wish you all the best. I don't know if any of the other guys, uh, coaches want to say anything. I got one last thing I want to shout out, not to blow anybody's horn, but um. One of my best teammates there is Peter Calero. Just gonna throw it out there. <laughs> him, him and uh, him and Eric Suits are one of my top guys. No one's beaten that. Um, both those guys used to come every day with a smile on their face and <laughs> never complained. Well, uh, Eric, shout out Eric for giving me the circle sweatshirt. The man <laughs> right there. But uh, those are the two best teammates I could ever ask for. And sorry, Dante, you were like you're probably dead last to be honest. <laughs> <sighs> Shenanigans, bro. I'm not. I'm not going. I'm not going to entertain him. Though you can keep going. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't. You don't want to get in a battle. You don't want to get in an argument. Right? You're not going to win. Um, I believe my 40 fast today, though. <clears throat> we should. We should time it right now. Um, but all right, I'll, I'll let you guys go again. Um, you know, you guys, you you make my whole world, man. This is why we do this. Uh, for stuff like this. Um, you know, again, like. Can't be more proud of you guys. We're so happy you guys are doing well. We wish you guys all the best. You always have a family here. Um, roll pride. Yeah, I would love to get you guys to a game. Um, I don't. I don't think we come anywhere that 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 way. But if you guys ever want to come down, I know we normally have. We'll put the whole team in a section. Get you guys. To, we got Dante through the whole experience. So I'd love to have all you guys down there and go through the same thing Dante went through. Two, 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 two. Not not the after the game experience. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey you guys, thanks for uh, coming. Um, hey, email those guys uh, if you want to do the Madden tournament. Uh, we are hoping for at least one or two guys from each team. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Love you guys. Take right. care. See you, coach.